Pentecost has a context. The context for us is this symmetry between Sinai and Zion. What happened at Mount Sinai when the Jews came out from Egypt and what happened to us when we came to Mount Zion for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. By the way, all those in the upper room were Jews. And so those are, have such a symmetry, such a parallel reality. It's like God, who is the creator, had a mathematical genius in putting those two together. And during this time is also when Jesus started to appear to his disciples, right? So let's just go through the symmetry first. I'll come back to the other. If I can find it. Okay. So, Mount Sinai in, act, in uh, Exodus 19 and 20, they come out of Egypt. Fifty days later, according to the rabbis, the word was given to Moses. So, they come out of Egypt. Moses goes up for 40 days, comes back, says, yikes, goes back. On the 50th day, the word is going to be given to the Israelites. They're not Israelites yet. And... God gives the law. He gives the word. The law is a bad translation. It means instruction. It really means, hey, here's a great idea, folks. If you live this way, in general, you're going to have a good society and a healthier society where people take care of each other and, and things are done in a legitimate fashion and there isn't the kind of cheating and da 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 da, da. That's kind of the extent of it is that it's, it's really about, uh, that's the other thing that's on the newsletter, is the Torah on one foot. Gamaliel was Paul's teacher. Right. His teacher was Hillel. Someone said to Hillel, I will become a Jew if you can teach me the Torah while standing on one foot. And Hillel said, okay, that which is abhorrent to you, don't do the others. The rest is commentary. Go study it. So we do this one-minute Torah. We take a teaching of the portion of the week. We read the Bible. We read the Torah, the five books of Moses, week by week. I think we learned it from Calvary Chapel, but I'm not sure. But the... the that was a joke. It was funny, too, by the way. <laughs> we learned it from Calvary Chapel. You get that? The Jews... Okay, never mind. Verse by verse. <laughs> God gave the law. He gave the word. He gave the Torah. He gave the instruction amidst thundering and lightning. Remember? On Sinai? On Mount Zion, in the upper room, God gives the spirit with tongues of fire. Parallel. The Sinai is considered the birth of Judaism. It's when we were born as a nation, having been the slaves for 400 years. Zion is the birthday of the believers in Yeshua, right? It's when we were born as a community. The receiving of the Torah ratifies our calling a priestly calling as a kingdom of priests. This is now an instruction that has to do with us bringing this light to the world. We have this treasure that now we can share with the world. On Mount Zion, receiving the Spirit made the church a cohesive family of believers, a kingdom of priests. We become, in fact, re regarding that cup of redemption, that's where we become Kalat HaMashiach, the bride of Messiah, because that was a bridal call. That was a wedding day for the Israelites, for the Hebrews, and God. And this is a wedding day for the born-again believers. It's a wedding day. It goes on. At that time, there was great joy, just incredible joy when the word was received. A lot of trembling going on too, but the ultimate extension of that is the receiving of the word brings great joy. By the way, that's why the Jews today on this holiday of Pentecost, of Shavuot, they eat dairy foods. Why culturally? Doesn't make a lot of sense. Why? Because it's receiving the milk of the word, thanking God for the milk of the word. We also read the book of Ruth. Why? Because Ruth is the perfect picture of meeting in the harvest field, a bride and a groom, a Gentile and a Jew, a harvest greater than ourselves, a purpose bigger than ourselves. And it's one of the yeah. most beautiful end time pictures of the church. Yeah. My people today are Naomi. Call me Mara. Call me bitter. We are outside the covenant. Most of us don't know our Messiah. You are Ruth. You're the friend. 
You're the friend. You're the one who says, your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you go, I will go. Where you dwell, I will dwell. Where you die, I will die. And the love that you carry, those people watching in New York City today, that's the provoking to jealousy that we need. We need to see the signs and wonders. I need to see them. But it's the love that you have within you that is un- undoing to us. Amen. Right now, Israel knows the only friends we have in the world are Bible believers. Amen. And we're not sure about that every day, you know? We've got, you know, a couple of millennia to be a little nervous about the church. You know, when, when God, Paul said in Romans to provoke us to jealousy, he wasn't thinking of the Inquisition, the Crusades, the pogroms, and the Holocaust. That's like, not, it's a non-starter. But the love that you carry and the way you walk in relation to the Jewish people, that's why we want to partner with you because we get to bring this to them. But you know what happens? You're the one who's going to get them saved. You're the one who's going to close the deal. I'm going to bring them the message, but they're going to look at me like, oh, yeah, yeah. but it's Ruth who leads Naomi into the house of bread, into Beit Lechem, Bethlehem. It's Ruth. And today, it's Ruth who's getting my people saved. It's Ruth who is leading us into the house of bread. And together, we get something that is exponentially more. That's why I believe these messages are valuable, because they're enlivening to the church. And I, me, we need the power of the Holy Spirit that the church carries. You see? David Davis, blessed memory, who was a pastor on Mount Carmel in Israel and one of my mentors, he said, we need the oil of the Jews and the oil of the Gentiles to have a full menorah. Come on. And that's the season we're in, folks. That's the season when God is lighting the lamp again. He's lighting the lamp, the lamp that went out around 300 A.D. It went out. It got snuffed. It got darkened as we cut ourselves from the Jewish roots of the faith. But now in this day... God is unveiling Romans 9 through 11 in a new way. And so we are now able to work together in a way that has never happened before. And I don't need to become a Gentile to follow Jesus. And you don't need to become a Jew unless you're really enamored of Jewish ritual, which I told the Nez Perce tribe up in in Idaho, up there, and they they had us come up and do marriage seminars. And then Israel and the pastors gathered me together. They said, listen, we got this guy. He's coming around. He dresses like an ultra-Orthodox Jew. He's not Jewish. And he's kind of peeling our people off to be Jewier. And and we're kind of nervous about it. I said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. So I give him the whole sermon about the efficacy and importance and centrality of Israel, Christians' debt to the Jews, and the Jews' need for the Christians. And I did the whole thing on Sunday morning. Then I said, I hear that some of you are enamored of Jewish ritual. And I want to tell you that it's all about Jesus. But... If you're really serious about following through, I'll be holding a ritual circumcision out behind the pulpit at the end of the service. We'll test your commitment. Great joy at the receiving of the word, looking to the harvest to come. On Mount Zion, great joy at receiving of the word, knowing that the harvest was ripe and that the people are going to start getting saved. And it was the beginning of an era of the Gentiles getting saved by the millions and now billion. Great joy. God is a genius, at least. At Mount Sinai, 3,000 died because of unbelief and because of disobedience. But in Acts, 3,000 were born again when Peter spoke the word. At Mount Sinai, the law came, but it was on the outside. Here's how to live, and it'll work. But on Mount Zion, a higher law came, and it's on the inside. It's a higher law, folks. Don't, don't fuss with me about law and grace. You won't win. Because you have a higher law. This was a way to have a cohesive community on which the Magna Carta, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and any sane, forward-thinking culture has based their stuff on the law of Moses, the teachings of Moses. Amen. But you have a higher law because Yeshua, Jesus, came and put that in your heart. So the law of love is now is now ruling you. That's the law you're, you're under.